When the fog clears from the Mendocino coastline and retreats to the redwood forest, you can see them. They are everywhere. Some are tall, some are short, and some look like they're falling apart. There are a lot of water towers here. <laughs> there are a lot of water towers. I, we're somewhere between 24 and 30 left. Mendocino <laughs> is affectionately known as the town of water towers. Historian Ann Siemens gives walking tours of the towers and says records show at one point the town had more than 100 of them. The whole reason we needed water towers was because we didn't have water to the houses and the way you got that was through this gravity fed system. Mendocino doesn't have a municipal water system, so every one of the 1,000 or so residents gets their water from a personal well. People use them as storage because it was important to store your water. Mendocino gets 40 to 60 inches of rain in the winter, but we have a really shallow water table. Before the invention of electric pumps, windmills were used to pump water out of the wells and into the towers. but. There was just one problem. Before they had self-oiling windmills, they just made such a racket. And so if you can imagine a hundred of these things in the town all going off at one time, it was quite a cacophony of sound. Other than being known for its water towers, Mendocino was once a logging town. Redwood trees were actually discovered by accident after a cargo ship wrecked on the coast. The first sawmill was built in 1852, and the town prospered until the 1930s. The mill closed up. The depression happens and the town goes into disrepair. What happens is um, the artists move here. Those artists revitalized the town and Mendocino became a tourist destination. Where did those tourists sleep, you ask? The water towers, of course. Okay, so we can go upstairs. Adrian Harris and Diane Snell have been renting out their water tower to tourists for a few years now. Yeah. So above us, this is where the water tower would have been above Would have been up there. We'll go up there next. For safety reasons, the water tank was relocated, but the tower is intact. Inside, the rooms are small, but really comfy. One thing to note, though, there's a lot of steep stairs. You don't want to make a misstep on, on right here. It's a long ways down. Once on top of the towers, you get a spectacular view of Mendocino and all its water towers. What is it like to sleep in a water tower? <laughs> the, the views from this one are wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. so nice. And, and it's very cozy. Looking for an elegant night's sleep? Try the water tower room at the McCallum House. Yeah, a guy could uh, definitely get used to a view like this. The McCallum House was built in 1882, and the three-story water tower features much of the original wood craftsmanship. On the first floor, you can even see the underground well. On the second, there's a nice bathroom with a sauna. And on the third, there's just enough room for a bed. Not a whole lot of space up here. Just Not up here. Bed. Yes, oh. yes, the rooms kind of get more narrow as you go further up. A trip to Mendocino wouldn't be complete without a visit to the Blair House, which is where they filmed many scenes of the drama Murder, She Wrote, which was technically supposed to be set in New England. She was supposed to live in New England, and uh, Mendocino was often used as a substitute for New England fishing villages because we were on the coast. You want me to tell you I love you? The movie Dying Young, starring Julia Roberts, was also filmed here. And we actually built a house for Julia Roberts for that movie, and this is what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Wind storms and natural decay are the biggest threat to these water towers, so whether you're sleeping in one or just admiring it from the road, enjoy them while they last. From the water tower town of Mendocino, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back road.